Uh, hi everyone, my name's uh, Stacy Penna, uh, and I'm uh, the InVivo Community Director here at QSR. So thanks for joining us for the webinar today. I, I know there's a, uh, a lot going on right now, so we appreciate you taking some time uh, to be with us to learn a bit, a, bit, um, a bit more about how to improve research team collaboration with InVivo. Uh, so again, my name is Stacey Penna, InVivo Community Director, and just to go over some uh, things about GoToWebinar that can be helpful. Uh, so first, if you go to the top uh, right-hand corner of your screen, there's an orange box with a white arrow. If you click on the white arrow, it opens the menu. Feel free to type in questions at any point. I'll take questions at the end, but uh, feel free to type them in. I also have the uh, handout. Uh, the PowerPoint I'm going to show you as a handout, so feel free to, to download that. <clears throat> I'm also going to do some polls just to get some interaction with the audience, and then um, at the end we have a quick survey just to, to help us learn more about what other types of webinars you might want us to do. Uh, so with that, and, and also this is being recorded, so you will get the recording uh, generally the next day in the follow-up email. So thank you once again. Uh, for joining us. Uh, so first off, um, and actually I'm going to do the first poll because this helps me uh, know who is in the audience. So I'm going to bring that up, just your experience with InVivo. So if you can uh, do that, so are you a new user? Have you used it for multiple projects or have you used it for many years? Because that gives me a sense of who's in the audience too. So it looks like, <clears throat> let's see. So quite a few new users, about 60% um, new users, about 28% used it for multiple projects, and 15 of you are, are saying I'm, I've used it for years, I'm a pretty much a, a probably a veteran user. Uh, so now it's down to 57, but yeah, it gives us a good sense. So I'm going to close that, so you should be able to see my screen again. Great, thank you, that's helpful. So. Um, because we do have new users, I just like to talk about the research process with InVivo. So it helps you manage your data and your research process. <clears throat> it doesn't dictate to you. So whatever methods you're using, um, it, it just you use them within InVivo. It just helps you organize that. We have some automation tools with a transcription, which is a separate uh, product I won't be showing today, unless at the end people have questions. And then automated insights for coding and sentiment. Also rigorous analysis, so it'll help you with your coding and queries, share your findings with maps, charts, and visualizations. This is actually gonna be pretty helpful when you're working on a team to, to create some things that you can all look at together. And then we'll be concentrating how to collaborate as a team here. Uh, so first, I just also like to show people all the different types of uh, data that can come into InVivo. Uh, so you have your Word documents, PDF, video, audio, YouTube can come in, um, social media like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, also, we integrate with bibliographical software like Zotero, Mendeley, RefWorks, and EndNote and also integrate with Qualtrics and SurveyMonkey. If you're doing a survey outside those two softwares, you can also just import a spreadsheet with your survey results. And then we also integrate with SBSS. Um, so now with our group of products, we're really trying to help you throughout your research uh, process. So helping you collect data, transcribe, manage and analyze, collaborate, which we'll focus today, and then uh, to publish your dissertation, journal, article, book, or, or a report you're doing. So I'm just going to go over some best practices to work as a team. So this is actually from one of our, our certified in vivo trainers. Uh, so you want to go through an intercoder reliability process with your team, and you can do that with in vivo with merging projects and using our coding comparison query. Also talk to your teammates frequently um, and, and check what they're doing. So we have visual coding comparisons I'll show. Uh, keep good notes and track your decisions, develop a team protocol, maintain individual research journals or also a team journal. Uh, and this can all be done within memos and annotations in Vivo. Keep a code book, so you'll need to uh, describe uh, the codes and then we can export the code book from Vivo. And always uh, um, 
iterative and uh, flexible, which is probably a good philosophy uh, in a lot of things. So just some helpful hints here. And then to go over the uh, collaboration process within Vivo. So typically, let's say I have a team of three people or three, what, three of us on a team, uh, and I need to uh, create, so I, I would create or have one person be sort of like the project manager, the Vivo project manager. So that person would create the project, probably add in your data. Uh, you might have decided on some codes already, so bring those into the software and the project. And then that project manager would then make uh, copies for the other two researchers. Um, I would suggest when you make a copy that you uh, give the uh, project the initials of the person and maybe even date it. And then you would uh, distribute it to the different team members who then would use it and code and work in it. And then when you're ready to see how people code, they would need to send it back to the project manager who would then merge the coding. And then from there, uh, you would be able to uh, see what was done with everyone's uh, projects in one project. And then you'd go through this process. So at the end, I'm going to show you our cloud collaboration um, product that allows you to do this in a much more seamless way. Uh, so just wanted to explain how people generally work with in vivo with it. So today what I'm going to go over is um, merging projects, coding comparison query, visualize your coding comparison, memos and annotations, and create a code book. And I'm actually actually going to show you a framework matrix uh, too to help you. So uh, and before I do that, though, uh, I'm going to go to the software, but I want to put a poll up because uh, this will just help me to uh, the next poll is how large are your research teams like uh, two to three people, five, uh, th uh, th th ah, three to five or five or more. This is the. Uh, so the poll, it's telling me. Um, it's about 42% are two to three members, 47, three to five, and nine to 11%, five or more. All right, thank you. Let's, at least it's always fun to get data. Um, so now I'm in in vivo here. So this is the new in vivo. Uh, so it has a, a different look to it. You can see I have an account here. I have a getting started video. I have links to the customer hub for free resources, the training um, and Vivo Academy link. And then we have our sample projects. So the multi-method sample project we've always had and automated insights, but now we have three new sample projects. So one for literature review, one for mixed methods and one for surveys. So if you want, you can go check that out. Uh, I'm going to open up our sample project here. And for people who are new to Envivo, we do have this nice tour just to get you up and going. So it'll just take you through organizing and exploring. And then the uh, these are our cloud-based modules. So I'll be showing you Envivo Collaboration Cloud today. We do have Envivo Transcription. That's a separate product that you can test out. And then Office Integration actually uh, comes, it's a 12-month subscription when you purchase new or upgrade to the new Envivo. So this is the new interface, much cleaner um, and a little simpler to use. So if I go to some tabs here, you can see you can easily get to different parts of the software. Um, and then the, the navigation panel here, we have three sections. So we have an import section where it's going to organize your data, an organized section to help you organize your coding, cases, notes, and sets, and then explore where you're going to find your queries, visualizations, and reports. And then here in the center is our uh, workspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, files and go to interview. So the first thing I wanted to show you is how you can actually see how people have code in a specific interview. Uh, and so and show you some new things with Noon Vivo. So you can see here we have a what we call a power bar that can get to many different things easily in the document itself. One thing that's new is if I go to codes and code panel, you can see here I have a, um, a code panel that's showing me all the codes that I could uh, code to drag and drop and then my cases too. Uh, and uh, one thing to mention too for those veteran users of Invivo, we don't 
say nodes anymore. It just codes just to make it easier for people, especially new people coming to the software. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to bring up my coding stripes by users. So I want to see uh, who coded in this document. So these are the three, three of us that are working as a team. So I'm going to just choose them. And I'm going to close the coding bar so it's easier for you to see. So I can see here how uh, the different researchers coded by their initials. So if I click EDR coded this section, so what's nice is the coding stripes also now uh, are the same color as the highlighting, so the, or the highlighting is the same color as the coding stripes. Uh, WW uh, coded pretty much everything, so we might need to talk to that researcher uh, team member, and then HGP coded this. So um, this is one way so I can look at an interview specifically and see how people have coded uh, to, to see are, you know, are we on track for inter reliability. Another part of the coding stripes I just want to point out, you can either have the names vertical or you can have it horizontal if it's easier to, that, that's new also. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's say I want to write a note to one of my co-team members um, in this. So like I'm working in it and maybe I do want to make a note uh, to WWS about something because they're coding a lot. Um, I can, I can One way I can do this, I can create annotations um, in a, a document. And so what that allows me to do is sort of thinking of it as like I'm writing little notes on the side of a, a paper, of, of a paper or, or a footnote. So I'm going to highlight what I want to make a comment on and I'm just going to go to new annotation and you can see on the bottom I can type in uh, this whatever I want <laughs> and then I can see here that's an annotation um, and uh, I can just click on it and it'll take me right to that annotation so that's one way you can when you're a team sort of make notes to each other in an actual document if you need to uh, now, <clears throat> another thing I want to show you with um, just to compare coding is if I go to the Explore tab here and I go to Queries, I can run a coding comparison query. And so I'm going to go to Query. I have one created already, so I'll just go to that one and show you. So in Invivo, it's going to um, run the Kappa coefficient for me, also show me agreement and disagreement percentages. So my understanding with the kappa is that the closer to one you get, the more agreement you have. So I'll just show you one that has less agreement. So I'll open up this code. And so I can see here um, with the researchers' initials how they've coded. So if I go down, I can see WWS coded that, HGP coded this section, and EDR coded this section. So this is where you might have a conversation with your team members to have more accurate entry reliability, we might want to code to the end of a paragraph or a sentence or decide that. Uh, the way Invivo calculates the kappa is the amount of characters that are coded. So, so just to let you know that. A couple other things with coding. So when you're creating that first project, the project manager will probably bring in uh, codes and um, when you do that, you want to make sure when you create a code, so I'm just going to create a code here. Um, and I would want to make sure I give a description of this. Um, you know, what this code means because then when I create I can create a code book to share with people but um, I'd only if I don't give the description I, it'll just come up with the name of the code um, so if I wanted to share the code book with other team members or people other stakeholders in the project um, I can do that by just going to share export and export code book and I'll just bring the top level ones No, I think because I created one before. Let me go. Um, let me try that again.
Uh, okay, clothing. Oh, shoot. So, sorry. I had, Oh, I know why. Maybe it's here. Ah, it's here already. That's why. Okay. Well, this is what it looks like. <laughs> so, I had already done a webinar earlier today, so that's why it was up. Uh, and so, you can see here the um, codes and then the description. So, this is something you can easily share with your team members or other people involved in the project. Now, this is the team's coding. Uh, but while I'm coding in the project, I find new codes and themes that I find interesting that I might want to code to, but I don't want to confuse the team's coding. So to get around that, if I want to create more codes, one thing is I just can create a new folder and I'll call it uh, Stacy because that's my folder that I'll be coding to. And then in this folder, I can create, um, and this comes up to explaining if I haven't open codes yet what what that is uh, so maybe I'll create a new called field work and I could give it a description here I could pick a color for it which I'll do uh, we have more uh, colors for for codes here we're highlighting them and it comes up <clears throat> and then just to show you one way so because this is in my folder it won't get confused with the team's codes and then when I merge the projects it will come in as my a separate folder and then as a team we can maybe look at each other's codes we've we've come up with ourselves to decide is that something we want to keep keep in the team's coding or, or not keep it separate um, and just for fun I'll just pick something to code here I'll bring up the Code panel, and you can see here I have Stacy's folders there now, and I can, if I want, just go and code to it. So, uh, a couple other things to go over. So, if I go to notes here, I can also create memos. So, if I wanted to create a, a team a memo, I could I could do that. And just right click new memo and um, uh, one thing I like to do is I like to bring up the uh, a date insert a date stamp time when I do uh, memos um, uh, you know I'm at Stacy I coded this and you know whatever I, I need to do and I can also create my own memo so it doesn't have to be a team coding memo um, other things when you just to show you where you merge a project so after um, if I'm the project manager I want my team to send their projects back to me uh, so that I can merge them together so you just go to import and go to project here and you'll be uh, sent here you browse find the first team members project and merge it together and then find the second a team members project and merge it together so now you basically have a new uh, team project that you can then send out send out again um, another thing just to show with the projects if I go to project properties here you can see here with users I can give highlight the different uh, researchers that are in the team uh, a certain color so I can see that with coding stripes I also have a way to do passwords so if I want uh, somebody who maybe isn't coding on the team but I want to show them the project I could also ask it just to be read only for them so that, that they can't work in the project and just some visuals here I'll just show you because some of the maps it's, it, these are new with vivo. so another thing that might be helpful um, is you might want to try using uh, our mind map. So when you're first starting and thinking about your coding process, this is a good visual to use to create um, sort of a, sort of like a whiteboard. So you can bring in your different ideas. So I can you know bring in float more ideas here. Uh, and then once you have this organized, actually you can actually create it as uh, your code structure under in your coding if you wanted to it'll, it'll it won't have any coding in it but will be this hierarchy if you want and then some other maps uh, so this is a project map so you can bring different items from the project in and organize and, and see what if there's any connections there 
bring up uh, the <clears throat> concept map. So again, you might be creating um, these kind of concept maps to show what you're seeing in the data or if you're, there's any sort of things that are popping up that you want to show visually. And any of this can be exported too. Um, <clears throat> so you could also create, uh, you know, uh, just a chart showing coding too, if you wanted to, to see that, so just showing some of the visuals for you. Uh, so I just want to make sure, and, and one last thing I want to show you is the framework matrix. So I think this is a type of tool that can help you um, look across multiple codes and if you needed to share with someone that doesn't have access to NVivo, it's a good way to do that. So I'll just create a, a new framework. And go to rows. In this case I have to I need to use the cases in in vivo. So I'm just going to bring um, some of the participants that uh, I have in the study. And then the columns, I'm going to bring up some codes. So I'm just going to go to economy and just bring up four, but you could bring up as many as you wanted. And I'll say, okay. So it's going to create a table for me. And then when I want to bring in the information, I would go to auto summarize there. And now it's going to show me with Barbara, she, um, all the different, um, uh, based on the, the codes I brought up before, uh, what was coded from Barbara's interview. So this can be easily exported to an Excel sheet that then is easily shared with other people. So I just wanted to show you that too. Uh, so now I'm going um, to go and show you more about in vivo collaboration. So with NVivo collaboration here, we have a couple different options. So I'm going to show you collaboration cloud. So it is cloud-based. It works with one project file. You can set permissions. It is uh, secure. It's an uh, Azure cloud. Uh, you, and it's basically that download upload process I described be before, but now it's in a way that's going to be easier for you to manage. And it's uh, four or five teams are up. In vivo collaboration server, that was our in vivo for teams product. Um, it has been um, up upgraded, but it does the same thing as it did before. It, it has to go on a dedicated server at your location, organization, university, but it does allow you to work simultaneously in the same project uh, and, and see in real time what's happening. And then the standalone is what I had described before. Uh, so first, what I'm going to do is just go through what it looks like uh, from the, pro, the, the team leads or the, uh, the project manager's uh, viewpoint and then show you as more of a collaborator, somebody working in the project. So now you create your own account with Invivo and that can help you get to all your uh, products and also um, just good resources to help you learn the software. So from the project lead or IT manager, um, that person would purchase in vivo for team in vivo collaboration, sorry, in vivo uh, cloud collaboration. And what happens then is uh, you can purchase up to five uh, for five team members, a team of five. And it's pretty affordable. I think for education, it's under $500 for a year for five people on a team, like just everyone. It's a total package for a team of five. And, and then that, um, the, the team uh, project lead would then assign the, you to that project. Um, so then you would be invited to be part of that project. So you can see here, I could either do it as the project lead um, or, or workspace manager is also a name for them is uh, one at a time or multiple people if I had it in a spreadsheet. And then I'll go back to the software to show you what it looks like in the software. Cause that, the, what I showed you before was in the portal. So I'm going to go and close this. 
And so here I can get to collaboration, but before I do that, you can see I'm in my account, but now I have to switch to my project uh, leads account. So Harry is my project lead. Uh, he's the one who purchased in Vivo Collaboration Cloud. So I'm going to go to Harry, and then when I go to Collaboration Cloud, it allows me to go right to uh, the project that we need to collaborate with. And so here you can see, I mean, it's showing me my workspaces, uh, the project, my role as collaborator, and uh, the project size and who's on the team. So if I go to the workspace, um, I can see everyone here too. And uh, so the different roles, a collaborator, I can only work in a project. I can't um, share or, or merge a project. And then the workspace manager, they, that they're, they are allowed, um, they have, can also uh, merge projects and assign projects. Uh, so Carrie, the project lead, has uh, uploaded a, a project for me that I need to work on. So if I go to versions, uh, you can see it's the version one. So I, what I did is I went and I uh, went and found, downloaded it onto my computer, um, and then I opened it from there with Invivo. And then I I worked on it and I was ready to to send it back to Harry. So I would go up to upload and browse and go find it and upload it um, here. I can write a summary, um, you know, whatever I'd like to write. I could write, you know, I coded um, all interviews. Maybe I want to write, write a note to Harry so he knows when he brings it in. I upload it, uh, but I also then need to tell Harry that I um, am ready to merge. So then he'll see that on his screen and then he'll know he'll bring it and uh, merge that project together. Uh, if I wanna see everything about what's happening here, I can see the workspace details, the name, who's on the project and the size of the project and what, what's happening with it. Um, so. And then you, you can even have multiple things open at the same time here. I can always go to help too if I have more questions, but it's really that simple. It's a it's an upload download process, but it's in a controlled way that makes it a lot easier for you to uh, work together as a team, especially a team of you know uh, two to five. And then for, for in vivo collaboration server, uh, this uh, is the same product we called in vivo for teams. It's just been updated and this allows you to install it on a dedicated server at your organization or university. And then teams can go in and work on the same project at the same time. So more simultaneous. Um, so that's another option for collaboration. So just going over our uh, different solutions for you. So to help you collect data, we have NVivo integration for Word, Excel, and Outlook, which comes with new NVivo for 12 months. We have our transcription product that is pay as you go for individuals or unlimited use for an organization. Uh, it's, it's done by subscriber. And then to help you manage, analyze your work, we have the NVivo desktop, both the Windows and Mac. I do want to point out that the new in vivo's interface for both Windows and Mac is the same now, which is makes life a lot easier. Uh, collaborate, so we have different options for collaboration, collaboration cloud or server, and then we also have many learning journeys with the uh, in vivo user certification course, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and on-site workshops. And the uh, courses will be out in May and uh, we have more focused learning modules too. So if you wanna learn how, how do I do a lit review within Vivo, those will be out in June. And then Vivo community. So I would love it if people uh, join the community. Uh, we're wanting to connect you with your fellow researchers. It's a global network within disciplines across organizations. And we're really trying to create a community of practice with qualitative and uh, mixed methods researchers. So please go, you had, this is in your um, handout. So if you go to this uh, URL, you'll be able to join the community and we'll have a newsletter coming out soon too, to keep you updated on what's happening. 
Uh, also to keep the conversation going, please go to hashtag and vivo chat and uh, you can talk to your fellow researchers. We've had a lot of webinars recently to help the research community on how they're going to do field work now and collect data when you know we're all trying to be safe and stay at home. So we have some of those on our website too. And then we have upcoming webinars. So we have a good one on teaching qualitative methods online with Christina Silver, Sarah Bullock, and Shereen Nelson. They've all taught qual methods online. So you get some good information from there. And then to continue this work really in helping researchers this time where it's a little more challenging to be able to collect your data and do your field work, uh, Dr. Christine Hind will be talking about the graphic field work across online spaces. I'll be on our website soon. So you just go to the Vivo website, resources, and live webinars, and you can register for any of these. Um, so that's it for my part. I am happy to stay on and take uh, questions. So I think um, Alex. Uh, uh, yeah, well, so we, we have two questions at the moment. So just a reminder, if you want to ask questions, the questions panel is on the right hand side um, in the GoToWebinar um, panel. Um, but we'll start with the two questions that we have. Um, if you're using annotations in a document as a way of communicating to another team member, how would they read this unless they have separate access to the same NVP file? So they would re read it once you uh, collaborated. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, once you merged the projects uh, and they could see it. So then they could go in. And so if I go to annotations here, let me show you. You can see by initials here uh, who... Uh, modified last and who created the annotation so it looks like the same person well here's there's one created by here and then uh, WDS modified it so so you would have to merge the projects to see their comments but then you'd be able able to see it and and in vivo tells you who did what by the researchers um, initials so okay, and can the co collaboration cloud deal with a mix of in vivo Mac and in vivo Windows users? So we recommend that you're all on the same operating system uh, for the best results. Technically, yes, you could convert the Mac project to a Windows and vice versa, but um, for the easiest way to use it, I, I would say I'll be on the same operating system. Um, can we, as a team, work offline on in vivo? Uh, yes. So with the collaboration cloud, you're basically um, downloading it onto your desktop and working on your desktop with the project. And then when you want to share it, you're uploading it to the cloud. And then the team lead then brings it back down to their own computer. So you can work offline with it. But it is a desktop product in vivo. Okay, um, and can you just talk about what the added value of Collaboration Cloud is? Can't you already collaborate within the project without Collaboration Cloud? So the difference, let me just go to it. Um, so the difference is if you do it by yourself, you still have to get the project to the other people somehow and then merge them. The collaboration cloud just makes that much more seamless and easier to do. And then you can also write notes to each other to know where you're at and you can see the team members in one place. Um, so it's still an upload download uh, process, but it's going to make it a lot easier for you uh, to collaborate on the project. And then also if you have multiple projects going on with different teams, or even within that team, you can also keep them all in the collaboration cloud um, accessible to the team members. And um, while you're doing asking this question, I'm just going to launch the next survey. I'm just curious uh, uh, what collaboration method would uh, best suit your team. So if people can do that in Vivo Collaboration Cloud or server or stand alone. Just just curious. Go go ahead. Um, okay. Alex. Um, so whilst we're doing that. Um, can you please clarify where the data on Collaboration Cloud is stored? Is it within the team leads country? So, oh, good question. So it's, uh, we're using Azure platform and we, we do have it in key uh, locations. So I know we have it in United States, I think Canada, Europe, uh, 
and in Asia, but I do Singapore. Well. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, um, I guess it, Alex, what, I think it probably would be where whoever, where they bought it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or you can it's, pick. It's, it's, or, um, yeah, go ahead. It's, well, so, um, the, 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 different ways of doing it. So typically what will happen is that you'll be hosted in the nearest server based on the location that's in your MyInVivo profile. So if you're in the US, it'll be hosted in the US. If you're in Canada, it'll be hosted there. Um, but likewise, I guess if you're in, let's say, Hong Kong, you will be hosted in Singapore because um, that's the nearest kind of server to the location of the per person making the purchase of Collaboration Cloud. Yep, yep. Okay, great. Um, that's helpful. Thank you. So for, the for people that are purchasing for an enterprise, I think they can actually specify if they want it to be something different than their kind of homes, home country as well. Yeah, so that's if an organization or a university purchases it versus um, an individual. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so the poll is saying 59% in vivo collaboration cloud, 23 collaboration server, and 18 standalone. So thank you. Okay. Um, one moment, one last question. Uh, could you demonstrate how you were able to, um, one, run a coding comparison, and two, show the different coders as coding stripes rather than the assigned code? Um, and additionally, are you able to run a coding comparison between more than two coders? So that's mm -hmm. quite a okay three questions in one there. okay um trifecta so okay so i'll uh show the i think the coding stripe question came up so what you do is you open up the document you go up here to coding stripe selected items and go to users and then i can click on the my team members that have coded and then the coding stripes come up and i can see based on their initials how they've coded um here and then i can even click on them to see you know, the coding too. Uh, so that's with the document. And then I think the other question was with the um, coding query. So if I go up to yeah, yeah. Can you run a, how do you run a coding comparison was mm -hmm. one of them. Yep. So and I, then whilst you're there, able to run a coding comparison between more than two coders. Yep. So I go to explore and go to coding comparison. I get this menu. I always tick add to project because then it will be saved here and you can get back to it easier. Unless you don't want, you just want to do a quick look at something. Uh, so I'll name it um, and go to coding comparison. And so now I need to select the different coders here. Now you're right, it's showing A, B, but you can do groups. So you could create, um, uh, uh, groups too, uh, so that you can look at that. And I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% uh, sure how to do that, but on the coding comparison I showed you, maybe I'll bring that one up. Uh, that might be better. And then uh, just, I'll go to the properties of that one because it might be better to show you query properties. So, oh, so then they did add two people here in the user group B and one person there. And then you can select items if you want, um, sets, uh, or how, how, whatever you want to, to compare. And then you can decide if you want to do the kappa uh, coefficient or percent agreement. So I guess that that's the way to do multiple. But um, I would also probably look in the Vivo for help to, to get more information about that, because uh, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on that part of it. all the questions I have at the moment, Stacey. Okay. Well, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today and participating. Um, and if you, uh, at the end, we're just going to have a quick, uh, a quick survey, if you can take at the end of the webinar, and it just gives us feedback on what other types of webinars you think would find be helpful. So thank you very much. Stay, stay, uh, stay safe and healthy.